Good morning YouTube, it's AD here from Dale Skidmore's Second Hand Tires. Welcome to part 9 of the boat restoration project series. In the uh, After the last episode where I finished bending the in and out whales, I've uh, moved on to the next couple of jobs, one of which is making two of these. They're called quarter knees and they are a support between the side and the transom obviously um, and I've uh, made up a template using sliding bevel taking an angle off the corner and then sort of roughed out a curve and marked out on a piece of the off cut from one of the uh, seats and cut them out with a jigsaw and then planed and fitted them into the corners because there's there's no right angles in that at all. They're all um, the back leans back, the sides lean out, and of course it's a uh, more than ninety degrees in the corner, and they've fitted really well together. Um, it didn't take as nearly as long as I thought it was going to because of all the different angles and, and trying and planing, trying and planing, and I've got them to a point where I think they look nice and sit nicely because obviously they're putting them up slightly so that they match in with the curve of the transom top when it's done. And I think they're thick enough. Um, it's possible that maybe they may have been slightly better if they'd have been slightly thicker. But bear in mind that what was on there was just a piece of plywood on each one plonked on the top. <clears throat> and I don't think there was any remains of any other former um, knee in that area at all. So I think they're going to be a lot, um, good enough. They'll screw in to the rails, or the rails will screw through into them, or nail through, and some screws. Again, there won't be any glue involved, possibly a bit of sealer maybe on the faces. But um, it'll all tie the boat together, which is its aim anyway and probably more important on wooden boats where they aren't the hull on this is all one piece but on a wooden boat the hull the, the transom and the sides all are all nailed or screwed together anyway so for if it's probably more for effect and look than it is for any real structural gain but because it's there it helps to spread the load through the boat again and tie it all together. And I think they're practically in the right place. Possibly they might go nearer the top of the rails, I don't know. And up at the fore end, I've put the, I've shaped the block I showed in the last episode uh, to fit into the prow. And that's going to be screwed through. I think there is already. There's certainly a filler mark where possibly a screw was that went into the original block that was there. And that, that's got some final fitting to do, which will be done once the, the rails are nailed on. But for now that's sort of roughed into shape and in place. And I've refitted or clamped on the uh, transom rail and i am marked it out for where to cut to start fitting it in the gap so it goes down level with the side rails as they come round the end and then they can be cut off to length as well and then that will all be fitted to nail together and um, again form a nice solid rail all the way around the boat so that's the next bit now and possibly later on today I should be stripping everything out and taking the boat outside and give it a good sluice down and then let it dry because I bought the paint for painting the inside with it's a one coat stuff it looks pretty lethal looking at the uh, warnings on the on the uh, tin there's all sorts of things about flammable where um, face protection hand protection causes skin irritation and uh, all sorts of stuff flammable you name it it's pretty 
sounds pretty deadly if you're not careful. So um, I suppose they cover themselves, don't they? Elf and safety, elf and safety. But that will make a, uh, a big difference to the look of the boat. Again, it'll be something more um, that's going on rather than coming off. Well, I've uh, roughly fitted in the transom rail and the transom plate. I reduced the uh, transom plate by about 50 mil all the way around the bottom edge and it's getting there but I'm not sure yet I'll have a keep thinking about that one but at the very least I've got some more of that ply and uh, I should be able to use that to make a pattern up to work from and uh, get the shape if this one turns out to be not satisfactory but it's not I don't know. It's there and it's not at the moment. Back to where we started again. Well, yesterday I painted on the first coat of the uh, inside paint. It was a bit patchy. But uh, I shall roll over the rest of it today. There's the can there. It's 750 mils. And I think its coverage is 12 square meters or something. And I've used just around about half to just over half of the can. And I'm going to roll the more important areas. The drop from the of the um, buoyancy chamber and all the way down to the keel on the insides up to that point there and then if there's any left over I shall probably save it because I'm going to be working on when I turn the boat over going to be working on the underside of the keel there and if there's any leaks they're going to need patching up and I think probably leave it as it is for doing any patching rather than stick it over or I'll have to peel off some of the paint because that will make it a big bit tricky <coughs> and uh, leave it until after it's gone for its first trials in the water before I do anything with the inside of that. It's going to be covered by floorboards anyway. So I'm going to get going now and open the garage door do the second coat, roll that on and uh, it's quite sniffy in here but it's not too bad it, the fumes weren't bad at all really uh, it's sort of like an enamel finish and it's gone on really well I say it's a bit patchy but that's the first coat it'll even up with the second coat I'm sure if not maybe um, another tin or um, just live with it for the moment and see how it goes. I don't know if you're getting this because of the sun and everything I can't see in the screen. The Spitfire Hurricane, obviously a camera, there's two Spitfires there. They're flying towards Cape Hall. 
to go to the Battle of Britain Memorial. I can't see in the screen at all, so I don't know where I've got them. But I knew they'd fly over us. I didn't think they were going to fly straight over the top of me. Amazing. So there we are. That's the second coat one on. There's just a little bit left, which I'm going to save because I might just do a little bit around the, the chine, just below the shear. But uh, it's evened out quite a lot now. So I'll leave it like that. Well, that was an unbelievable surprise. I knew that. Uh, oh, it's hot. I knew that the Spitfires were flying today. It's the head corn uh, weekend of uh, Battle of Britain um, festival, and today they were flying from head corn over to Deal in that direction, and then back across to Capel, and then back to head corn again. Earlier on, I saw two of them flying over some distance away. It was two spits, I think it was, flying some distance away over that way towards Deal. So I'd set up the zoom on the uh, camera, expect them to come back along a similar path. And uh, <laughs> when I heard them, they were so low, they must have been 500 foot, no more. When I heard them coming, I had just enough time to dart out the garage and pick the camera up and on the way and turn it on. And <laughs> But of course, I was so zoomed in that uh, at that height above me, I had to zoom out again. So I did catch a little bit, but like they just were straight over the top of me before you know it. And uh, it was incredible, a beautiful sight. I'm reading a, a book, funnily enough, I found in the works a week or so ago uh, called Dawn Flight, I think it is, by Geoffrey Wellham who was a fighter pilot. He was 17, 17 and a half when he joined the RAF and or became a civil, civilian uh, trainee and then joined the RAF and flew Spitfires all the way through the Battle of Britain. And uh, it's a good book. And uh, I'm only, I don't know, halfway through it, if that, at the moment. And uh, to think that those planes are still flying today, it's amazing, it's brilliant. Good little treat for you, I hope. Well, that's the second coat all dry. Didn't take long. I think it's about a couple of hours or so, and it's uh, touch dry. Feels a little bit greasy still, but uh, I think that's more to do with the fact it's gloss. It's come out slightly uh, well. It's come out white. It's quite a brilliant white, actually. On the label, it's got it on a cream sort of background. It looks like it. maybe that was the colour it was meant to be, like they are normally on the pots. But it's not, it's brilliant white. But uh, I was hoping for a cream because if you get the sunlight shining down on this when you're out in it in the open, it probably uh, give you quite a bit of dazzle, maybe. But uh, that's what it is. I can't remember what the other choices were now. But certainly, it was the best out of the choices. So I'm happy with it. 750 mil. I've used practically all of it. Probably, if I got another pot, it would completely take out all the dark spots from the blue underneath. But um, I don't know whether I'd want to bang any more coats on just yet. That's something you can do in the future. You can e keep adding to it. In the end, you could spend ages just doing the coats until you got it really completely one colour. Hopefully the outside of the boat will be a better finish than the inside, but the inside's rough anyway. So I'm quite happy. It doesn't look unnecessarily rough. Obviously up there in the fore, in the fore deck area, I've only put one coat on and the blue shown up from underneath, but that's going to be covered over and hidden anyway. So. Again, not too worried about it. Well, I think that just about wraps up this uh, video. The uh, paint's on and curing now, and I'm starting to think about putting the boat back together again. I've got uh, sand and
paint the insides of the rails and, and the other woodwork with uh, epoxy so um, to seal it and then uh, start putting everything back together again. So it's getting exciting. I have been thinking today about the floor. I've got the uh, wood, so a load of pine up there. that um, I did buy to do the floor with and I started to look at one end, the back end actually, of uh, making one of the floors, as it's called, the rail that goes along that the actual slats will fit on. But I started to think today, because of some of the stuff that's piled out for uh, my next door neighbour's wood pile and scrap um, wood pile, that um, I wonder whether a bit of a couple of bits of plywood about four foot by three foot wouldn't go better and sit in the boat with the join in the middle um, and cut some slats in that uh, I really uh, I don't know yet it's um, it's something to think about um, the wood that I bought for the job I can use on other things we've got some bits and pieces in the house that need doing and um, I'm sure it will not go to waste, but uh, I've started to think about a bit of plywood. Certainly as a quick fix and maybe even it might be easier doing it with that. I could always save the wood and make up something else anyway. So uh, thanks all for watching and commenting and for your continued interest in this uh, boat project. I'll see you all soon. Cheerio.